Welcome to the driver's seat. Today we're in a 2017 Toyota Highlander SE all-wheel drive and we're actually on the East Coast in Virginia Beach. I want to talk about this car. It's been around for almost 20 years. The first model came out in 99 as of 2000. So it's coming up on a 20 year anniversary and it really came to market at a time when traditional SUVs were popular. Ford Explorer was selling like crazy. Everybody wanted body on frame. But since then, Pathfinder and Explorer and others have gone to a unibody. And really these guys were the first kind of mainstream uh, crossover SUV, if you will, uh, to get on the market and not be a body on frame uh, as far as mass produced models. They've really managed to evolve the brand. I think when they first came out, the Highlander was a little soft. It had the shifter uh, up here kind of on the dash and it was geared, I think, more towards women. I think now they're geared more, more towards families. This is a three row SUV now, we'll crossover, whereas the first Highlanders were only two rows. And that was one of the knocks. And, and really it was a reason, I'm glad I'm actually driving behind this Yukon XL because you know, people said, no, we can't do a Highlander, we need this. And recently I had a family member with two kids, young kids, in the market for an SUV slash crossover. And he really wanted to get the Yukon XL Denali. And I really tried to talk him out of it. He wasn't having it. Now, if you gotta do a lot of towing, sure, the heavy towing, the Yukon makes sense. Uh, if you really need room for, to be able to put adults in the third row, it makes sense. He, he's, he's not doing any of that. Uh, they're both all wheel drive. They both have three rows. The difference is about $30,000, $35,000 in price and about eight miles to the gallon. On a typical year, you would save, depending on where you live, between $750 and $1,000 in gas uh, by buying the Highlander over the Suburban. So it, it just doesn't really make sense. I'm not going to tell you what you should buy or shouldn't buy, but when people tell me, no, I need this car, no, you wanted that car, this is really all you need. In fact, this is more than you need. But anyway, let's talk more about the Highlander. Uh, you know, starting price is in the low 30s, but you can easily equip this up near 50, if not more. It's also available as as a hybrid right now gas prices are cheap so that's not a big consideration for for people it's a nice vehicle i think one of the knocks on it is that it's almost gotten too big and shorter drivers might struggle a little bit with with, with the larger dash it's a very deep dash but taller drivers uh I, I think welcome it one thing i really like is this compartment uh, that allows you to store your smartphone uh, very nice nicely done Nice clear gauges. The infotainment is good. It's not great. And of course that's because it doesn't have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, one day Toyota will have to make that decision. But until then, it's, it's a great driving vehicle, great resale value. And you know, appreciate Toyota letting us have it out here for a couple of weeks and really spend some time with it. As you can see behind me, if you move the camera back there, Plenty of room for a bicycle. We have the all the, the second and third row folded down. Easily fits in. You don't have to take anything apart. This this is slotted uh, above the Rav4 size-wise and below the Sequoia. It's just a great alternative to people who just don't want a minivan. Uh, so you don't get the sliding doors, but you you get a lot of the other benefits. Competing with the Highlander. Our vehicles like the Ford Explorer, the Nissan Pathfinder, Chevy Equinox, Dodge Durango, I mean, the list goes on and on. Honda Pilot, of course, that's one of the be better selling ones in the, in the segment. And of course, the new VW Atlas. So a lot of options uh, in the segment. If you So once you've decided I want a full-size crossover, uh, those are your primary options. And you really can't go wrong with, with any of those. I think I could recommend them all. Of course, with Toyota and Honda, you've got the better reliability. You don't have uh, a CVT in this that you do in the Pathfinder, which I, I don't like. I don't, don't think 
the CDT has good longevity, especially if you put some strain on it and do some light towing. I see light towing, this is capable of towing, you know, between 3,500, you know, you could probably push it to 5,000 pounds. So it, it's got some capabilities, but it's certainly, uh, it's no suburban. It's not a true body on frame. SUV. It is a crossover, but a very capable crossover. It's got a good all-wheel drive system that will you know, do more than fine in you know snow and mud or whatever whatever you need it to do. This one has the adaptive cruise control. We're able to test it out a little bit, and uh, it works great. As you can see, the acceleration is is good. You have a 3.5 liter V6 engine and overall really very little to complain about with this Highlander. So now the adaptive cruise control is kicking in. We have it set to 54 but because we're behind this car it's going about 48. Now if I switch lanes as you can see without touching the accelerator it's going to go back up to 54 that I previously set it at. A lot of cars have it. Just thought I'd make a quick demonstration of it. Look around with this 360 view. Uh, you can see that this car has great visibility, not a lot of blind spots, and uh, that's important, especially for shorter drivers, but you know, also for older drivers who may not be able to turn their neck as, as easily. So uh, it's got all the greatest, uh, latest and greatest safety features that, that Toyota has to offer, and overall, it's an easy recommendation to make. If you are in the market for one of these uh, and you're a member of Costco, I would highly recommend Costco or True Car. I recently helped someone buy one of these and the deal that I could get through Costco and from True Car was better than the deal that I could get as a partner of Toyota. So uh, something to consider some good deals to be had out there and uh, the Highlander is easily top three in the segment. I'm Ron Doran, thanks for watching. Oh, by the way, I just wanna mention, uh, this is the third 360 VR camera that we're trying out. We tried out the Ricoh Theta and it was garbage. Then we had the Nikon Mission 360, complete trash. Even B&H Photo, probably the largest seller of camera equipment in America, couldn't even couldn't get the software to work even they said it was it, it was a subpar product so we're trying out the Garmin 360 and so far so good you can also superimpose uh, the speed onto the screen uh, because Garmin after all is a GPS company software has been solid and uh, really like the f the editing features where you can superimpose information critical information so we're gonna keep playing with it would love to get your feedback on it Thanks again. I'm Ron Dorn. See you next time on the driver's seat.